I'm the executive director of Free Cycle Network, and we're glad to be here. I'm from Tucson, Arizona, and my tech team over here, Richard, is from Birmingham, UK. He's doing wonderful filming right now. Um, at this point in the day, there's been a few groups speaking before us, so I should probably talk about something cheery, like global warming. So, to perk you up a little, I promise it's only a sentence or two. Uh, I would argue, as regards to global warming, unlike the brochure of the event today, that we're not frogs sitting in the heating water of global warming, but rather <clears throat> that each of us are desperately looking for a little ladder out uh, for solutions to the issues. But where is this tool? Where is the Facebook or the MySpace for the environmental community? Where can we find the yin to this global yang problem that we have over there? The old mantra that we have to solve our woes has been to consume, uh, whether politically, economically, socially, or on an individual basis, that mantra does not seem to work well with our planet today. Uh, indeed, fast food is not the comfort food of the soul. Buying shoes, although tempting and fun, is not necessarily a substitute for a good friend. Uh, <clears throat> what has happened to our history that we had before us? There was the potlatch, the gifting, the uh, quilting bees, and the barn raisins. It is our belief at the Free Cycle Network that we need to integrate consumption back into its natural spot within the food chain of community. Free Cycle provides a segue from commodity to community. What the freecycle.org free is, is a sort of free eBay or a cyber curbside that enables people to give items away rather than throw them away, each in their own local community and their local group. It is also a vast, globally local network of millions of members, just over 3.5 million, in thousands of local groups and over 75 countries and 18 languages. Uh, we have some 10,000 volunteers, and we have a staff of one. This is grassroots organizing at its best, and this is what the internet is enabling us to make possible in the modern, modern world today. And it's really fascinating to be a part of this. It's a grassroots wildfire. We're adding 20 to 30,000 new members a week as we speak. This would not be help possible without the help of Yahoo and Yahoo groups who are the foundation for each local group that we use to enable the gift. So a big thank you back to the back corner, back over there. Uh, <clears throat> so as an organization, uh, in the past year alone, we've been able to keep four times the height of Mount Everest, out of landfills, we stack that in garbage trucks, because of individuals, just like each of you, giving one gift and one community, uh, we've been on PC Magazine's top 101 list, Time Magazine's top 50 list, and all this is a little environmental nonprofit with no real website of its own and 4,000 local dollar groups. We've got the piece. We need the pond. <laughs> Our challenge is to build a pond so that people may apply their fishing skills by themselves. Nobody likes sitting in hot water. We just need the tools to get out. Now, this pond needs to handle some. 10 to 20 million unique site visitors a month. In the past four years, a lot of good people have been doing a hell of a lot of good. And uh, the challenge to get from global warming to doing something positive and proactive as an individual in each person's community is that it needs to be fun and it needs to enable a shift in the paradigm from the fun being given to the fun being given. And that's what we're making possible on an individual basis with each person who makes the gift to another in their local community using the FreeCycle network as a tool. What we are at this point in time is the largest on-site, online recycling community in the world. What we need to be is the largest environmental social network in the world. I would argue that the key difference is to change the forum, to change the way that we interact with other websites and the tools and services we're able to offer on our own. Whether it's enabling people in MySpace or Facebooks to offer items for free in their local postings, 
or figuring out a way to create an interlink with the Craigslist and Yahoo groups. And maybe a woman in Botswana is able to use a cell phone to send a picture and an item that she's going to give away to another local community member. Oh, my time is up. So I'll read my final sentence. <laughs> so, uh, what does Texas and Great Floating funding for coding up front? And uh, we hope that uh, some of you might be interested in joining us as partners in this adventure that we're on right now. We're ready to take it up to the next level. We have our phase one of the new slide to complete, to demonstrate with Richard. And uh, we thank you as we welcome your help in changing the world, seeking to establish a global gift economy, one gift at a time. Thank you very much. And here all those numbers. And in case the coffee is wearing off, I'm going to try to make sure you hear those numbers. I'll point them out when we get there. Here goes. Big Brothers Big Sisters recently celebrated our 100th anniversary. <laughs> Since 1904, we've grown to over 1,000 locations across the country that do one thing and one thing only. We're putting a, by putting a caring adult into the life of a child who needs another caring adult in their life. The rest, as they say, is magic. And if you want to go to our public website, we have objective studies that show the empirical evidence that the program works. As Big Brothers Big Sisters approached their 100th anniversary, we were proudly providing this magic and service to 100,000 children per year. And we were very proud of that, 100,000 children per year. Despite our pride, after 100 years, our leadership wrestled with the fact that there are 10 million at-risk children in America today. I'm going to repeat that. 10 million at-risk children a day. So the leadership of Big Brothers Big Sisters embarked on an ambitious vision. How do we expand our program tenfold? How do we go from 100,000 children per year to 1 million children per year? Did you get all those numbers? Okay, I'm going to put the bell away. No more bell for a while. What we did was not very, it was not much sizzle, it was not very exciting, very meat and potatoes. We have a huge waiting list of children, and how do we go to scale? Changes were needed throughout the entire organization, in leadership, marketing, branding, service delivery, everything. We had to turn around a 100-year-old organization that was, to be honest, pretty much in, stuck in its place. It was quickly realized that an important part of this would be an IT business system. 1,000 locations, each using their own homegrown access database, um, was just not going to get us there. We could not have uh, agencies wasting time reinventing the wheel over and over again. So a single Big Brothers Big Sisters system, the Agency Information Management System, AIM system for short, was designed with specific goals in mind. Number one, it had to allow for telecommuting and access from a variety of uh, points of service. A thin client web application was the obvious choice. It had to be simple and intuitive to use. It had to be simple enough for a little three-person office serving 100 children and a 60-person office serving 5,000 children. It had to enforce reliable business rules and record keeping. The system had to ensure that every step happened during the enrollment process, background checks, references, and everything, and nobody could skip or doctor the records. In addition, if you apply to be a big brother or sister at one location and you were previously rejected for safety reasons at another, the system flags that and will make sure that that's known. And finally, and most importantly, it had to enable staff and management to constantly monitor and improve performance. Every milestone and aim has a threshold, and if that task is not done in time, first it's a little red exclamation point, then it blinks and it's noise, and then the supervisor gets an email, just to keep things moving so that you don't miss important milestones. And finally, it had to leverage the evolving use of the internet. Right now we do simple online inquiry, online applications, and forms, which is what I would call 1.0, and as you'll see, we hope to move into a much richer environment. Because we have over 500 separate 501c3s, we could not go to these agencies and say, you must use our program. We had to come up with a system that was so compelling that they would want to adopt it, and more importantly, want to pay the annual subscription fee we were charging for it. Being a finalist in this, um, today, for this award is especially sweet for the following reason. I'm about to talk fast. Um, one of our agencies suggested we submit to this. This agency was one of our naysayers. They, they were absolutely convinced that the natural system could not do what they needed. Now they're one of our strongest ambassadors. So very quickly, where are we now? Um, last year we served 230,000 kids, so we're on our way. More than double in six years, and we're growing gangbusters. But now we're hitting the hard part. 
The first hundred agencies that converted to the system, they were the easy ones. You know, these are the big ones you can see it. Now we're moving on to the smaller agencies, many of whom uh, don't see the value and need to be convinced. AIM, secondly, AIM is a performance management transaction system and is fairly weak in reporting and analysis. We want to build a data warehouse that links it to fund development data and volunteer recruitment data so we can do much more powerful analysis. And finally, we have to go beyond simple e-forms and e-applications. We want to set up a volunteer portal where all volunteers can go and um, access materials. So finally, my time's up, so I'm going to close with one more number. And that last number is the number one. One as in one-to-one -one relationships. One <coughs> as in making all of our agencies act as one organization. One as in if, if even one person in this room goes home and is inspired and wants to be a big brother, big sister, this will be worth it. And finally, one as in how we hope to change the world, one child at a time. Thank you. The MAP, in MAP like MEP, stands for money and politics. I'm Dan Newman, the executive director and co-founder. So politicians need money to run for office, and the place that they get that money most of the time is interest groups that want something from government. And this has a distorting effect on policy. The MapLite website brings together all the campaign contributions to politicians to how every politician votes on every bill to provide groundbreaking accountability for individual legislators and to build a broad movement in support of money and politics reform. The audience for our site are, is journalists, bloggers, issue-oriented nonprofits across all issues, and citizen leaders, anyone who's interested in a particular issue, bill, or legislator. So here's an example of the effect money can have on politics. A year and a half ago, the California legislature decided to spend $18 million to put more fresh fruit in school lunches. But the food processing industry makes money from canned fruit, not from fresh fruit. And before this program became law, they had the word fresh in this program changed to nutritious. And now schools can serve canned fruit and sugar syrup with this money that was originally going to fresh fruit. Now the food processing industry over four years has given $2.3 million to 189 California candidates, both Republicans and Democrats. And so now, we as taxpayers and parents are paying for this program that was supposed to provide fresh fruit. Our kids are eating canned fruit and sugar syrup so that food processing companies can make more money. A few more examples. The price of prescription drugs. Earlier this month, the US Senate decided to block citizens from importing low price prescription drugs from Canada. The drug companies gave three times as much money to the senators who favored this compared to the senators who oppose it, that is the drug companies wanted, and those senators they favored wanted to block the imports, and they were successful. There's the future of the internet, net neutrality. Telecom companies like Bell South last year gave three times as much money to the legislators who voted their way compared to the legislators who voted the other way. And standards for how much toxic chemicals are in the bottled water that we're drinking today. Bottled water companies gave seven times more money to the legislators who voted to continue to have no regulation of toxic chemicals compared to the <laughs> legislators who wanted to regulate. And I'll point out that in California, there is no regulation of bottled water standards of any kind because of the bottled water industry. Our organization began two years ago after a year and a half of development and research. We launched our California site last fall, tracking money in politics in the state of California. And two weeks ago, we launched our flagship project, tracking all money and votes in U.S. Congress. You may have seen David Pogue's New York Times column, New York Times column about us on Thursday, profiling our site. For sustainability, one of the features we'll, we'll be adding is paid subscriptions to money and politics data so you can get custom analysis tools as well as keyword-based advertising on our site. And our current revenue plans are informed by my own background as a technology entrepreneur in the speech recognition software field prior to founding MapLight. Over the next year, our plans include adding widgets so that any blog or website can include our money and politics information easily on their site. We're also going to combine the campaign contributions with demographic data from the U.S. Census to get a graphical picture of the relative disenfranchisement of African-American communities when it comes to money and politics. 
and we'll start a personal legislative tracking service so that you can keep track of what bills and issues are of interest to you. To do this over the next year will cost $450,000, of which we've already raised $250,000 from the Sunlight Foundation and from tech-minded individuals like you folks. We need financial support, we need web hosting services, and we need some talented volunteer programmers to help us expand. On our website is a video tour, it takes six minutes, so with the break or tonight, visit our site, click on video tour, it'll take you through the whole thing. Now, whatever issue you care about, campaign contributions distort public policy. I chose, I choose to devote my time and talents to money and politics in particular because it's the highest point of leverage, the central focus to unlock social change across all issues. MapLight provides the key information to hold legislators accountable and make the connection between the individual issues that people care about and the broad issues of money and politics to build a broad coalition for reform. We've had enough of government giving us the same old sugar syrup time and time again. It's time for something fresh. So, my name is Yvonne Taney. I came to Net Squared through the Omidyar Network originally, and I run a nonprofit called Emeration, which produces educational media. I believe in the social web because I've seen what it can do. I've worked with over 100 innovators, some of whom are in the room here, some of whom are all around the world and have started organizations. I like helping organizations because of the social web that can make them come together, get our ideas out, connect, figure out who needs to be where who needs what resources are going to happen. Yeah, I'm Michael Miranda with uh, Association for Community Networking. I'm here as an advocate with Net Square. Uh, why is the social web important for social change? Well, the key word is social. You want social change, you don't know about social, but it, what the heck is social web? I don't really understand it. Web 2.0 is a lot of hype uh, language around what is the fundamental design of the internet to begin with. And the internet design is uh, end to end, fear pushing the intelligence at the edges, it's the wetware of our brains, our people interacting. It's, it's not the special technologies that are there, but they provide an infrastructure for us. And actually, um, I think we've got to make sure that we have the proper internet that we originally established. And, uh, network neutrality is not a done deal. We got to keep fighting for it. Uh, while I've been organizing in Chicago, uh, I did a series of videos myself recording people and what they understood about the internet, how they were using it, and you know, for people like us who've been pushing, you know, using cutting edge technologies, the important thing is not in the technology, it's in the human stories, it's in what people are using this for, the, the content areas in which people were using the internet and how it applied is just, it was opening my mind in such a way that it's like, wow, these are, you know, uses I never would have thought of, but of course, once you hear it, it's like, wow, of course we could use the internet that way, but, you know, from everything to, like, you know, all the details of... Uh, Jean Russell, I'm with Nerdy.biz, and I am here as a sponsor participant from uh, the MIDI-R network. Um, my organization works to facilitate collaboration, and we're really interested in putting the power to the edges in um, capturing collective intelligence of the uh, users of the internet uh, in order to make social so we want to empower people to speak their voice and um, bring people together to together we are more than any one of them. Ready when you are. Hola, mi nombre es Eduardo Vélez, soy el director de Solgarty, Fundación de Ayuda por Internet. Y estamos aquí en la conferencia NextCloud presentando nuestro proyecto Yantana.org, que es un proyecto que busca empoderar y construir capacidades en fundaciones ubicadas en países en de desarrollo. Nuestro proyecto va a tener dos partes. La primera parte es una estrategia en línea que lo que va a permitir es que la organizaciones tengan las herramientas necesarias para poder desarrollar su trabajo de manera más efectiva. Y la segunda parte es una parte fuera de línea, dándoles soporte y eh, permitiendo que ellos aprendan y se capaciten en el uso de las mismas. Eh, estamos en Ecuador basados y desde allí empezamos a desarrollar este proyecto y exportarlo o eh, desarrollarlo en otros países en desarrollo. Eh, vamos a ver cómo lo va en este momento en las sesiones de FIPA y esperemos que todo sea éxito para todos nosotros. Gracias, un saludo. Okay, you know, this, the, the social web and social networks are important in order to accelerate change. 
salary change that is global, so it has to do with the reach. It also has to do with the ability for people to connect. You know, so you may not know what organization you want, but through searching, through a Google search, you may find Wiser Earth, um, or you may find uh, innovators, or you know, you'll find you'll be able to find what you're really interested in, and then connect to it and become passionate.